And okay, thanks so much. And hello again, everyone. And hello to those folks who are watching this video recording. My name is Haley McCormick. My pronouns are she, her, and I work in the International Programs Office at Queens as the Arts and Science Exchange Coordinator. It's a great pleasure to be here in this virtual space with you today as we talk about the Arts and Science Exchange Student Course Registration Experience. Um, so our goal today is to provide you with an overview of your course registration timeline ahead of your arrival at Queens. We're going to answer your questions and we're going to give you some really useful guidance so you know how to navigate the various course offerings that we do have in the faculty. And I hope that you'll leave here feeling a little more confident and um, well informed of what the next steps are for you in terms of course registration. To begin our time together, I would like to acknowledge that both Queen's University and Kingston, which is where Queen's is located, are situated on the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee nations. To reflect on this is to acknowledge the longer history of this place, one that predates the arrival of um, the earliest European settlers. When you join us at Queen's University, you will hear an acknowledgement of territory ahead of many major or important events or gatherings. So for instance, you will commonly hear this ahead of your classes or if you attend a campus event. It's an important way for the Queen's community to acknowledge the history and the current um, relations between Indigenous nations and settlers or people who traveled to the land we now call Canada um, recently or even many centuries ago. It's an important way for the presenter or the, the leader of the gathering to acknowledge as well, the work that still needs to be done on this land in terms of truth and reconciliation and the work that is often led by and, and has been led by for uh, since time immemorial by Indigenous nations on protecting the land and taking care of the land. So my hope is that as you acclimatize yourself with Queens, you start to join more events and meetings, you will hear more of these land acknowledgements and that will also encourage you to think about how you as a visitor to Turtle Island or the land we now call Canada will be able to um, contribute and learn about this ongoing uh, relationship um, and the ongoing um, situation with, within the country. So I would encourage you to pay close attention and to think about what that means for you. And I'll share with you one of the things I try and do to better inform myself as someone who identifies as a settler person on this land. So my family traveled here many, many generations ago, is I try and learn more about the history of colonization here and the efforts that are being put into truth and reconciliation and do my best to contribute to those uh, in my local community and in my conversations with folks. So hopefully, this will become something you're accustomed to and hopefully something that you can engage with as you visit us as an exchange student at Queen's. Today's session is going to cover, as I mentioned, course registration, and particularly we want to discuss academics at Queen's. We want to give you an overview of what this entails. We want to discuss the COVID-19 impacts on course registration for the upcoming winter term. And we want to discuss registration instructions. So we will talk about a little bit of context in terms of academics and COVID, and then we will have a more practical part of the webinar where we give you some instructions that you can follow beginning next week. And of course, we importantly want to address your questions as well. For context, if you are watching this video recording, which will be posted as Mickey mentioned at a later date on our YouTube page, um, this is a session that is particularly geared towards arts and science winter exchange students. As Nikki had mentioned earlier on, we will be recording this session, so please do keep that in mind if you want to unmute yourself at the end of the session to ask any questions. We are going to encourage you to use the chat box throughout the session just so we can continue to move through at a pace that will be best for your learning. And if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed or uncertain about how to navigate course registration or any other component of your exchange, Know that you can connect with us virtually. Uh, probably the best way to do that is in our Zoom rooms. So from Monday to Thursday, every week, the IPO staff members host online Zoom rooms where you can drop in and ask questions. And we'll make sure to get that information to you in an email following this session. 
let's start off with a welcome to Queens. So I have a, a bit of an outdated photo here. This is our exchange team, but uh, we have a, a colleague who has moved on to an exciting new opportunity. And of course, Nikki is our newest member of the team. So apologies, Nikki, we'll need to get a new photo for our, our sessions. But this shows you where the International Programs Office is located. We're, uh, we're, we're kind of central uh, on campus in one of the main buildings in McIntosh Quarry Hall, where you might find yourself having lectures or seminars because we are offering uh, in-person classes this year. Um, and our team is rather small. So we are a close-knit team. We work very closely with students. Our goal is to help you as you transition into your exchange at Queens. Um, there are other offices that you'll work with as well, which we've introduced to you in the first email you should have gotten from our team. I know that you're in the midst of pre-departure preparations, so I thought it might be helpful to provide you with uh, a rough or vague list of pre-departure preparations uh, so you can perhaps compare that to your own and if necessary add any of these. So this is just a way to acknowledge that we recognize there's more to all of the preparations you're engaging in than just course registration. We will be pointing you towards some videos that the Queensland University International Centre has produced that will talk about other components of your arrival. So there's a housing webinar, there's some information on visas on their website. We'll make sure to continue to provide that information to you as you are preparing for exchange. I'm not going to go through this whole list with, together today with us, but we will be sending this video recording out so you'll be able to review this again. Um, and these are just some general tips of things that you should be thinking about and incorporating into your pre-departure preparations. So now that we've talked a little bit about some of the general items that we know that you're thinking about and conscious about at this stage of pre-departure preparations, we want to shift gears and move into talking about academics specifically at Queen's and particularly in the Faculty of Arts and Science. And the goal of this next section of the webinar is to give you that foundational knowledge that will assist you and aid you in actually selecting courses, which will be happening in November. Let's start with a broad overview of the faculties that we offer here at Queen's. These are the main academic units within which there are many other departments or divisions. And you know that you'll be studying in the Faculty of Arts and Science at Queen's, but these are all of the faculties that we offer. So I wanted to show you this just to provide a broad overview. And I wanna help break this down a little bit further. So you'll be studying in the Faculty of Arts and Science but we know that you might not solely be studying arts and science at your home university. Perhaps you have an interdisciplinary degree program that also allows you to take some engineering courses or perhaps some business courses. And we want to do the best we can to give you as wide a variety of opportunities as possible at Queen's. All this means is you'll be based in the Faculty of Arts and Science, meaning you will take the majority of your courses there, so typically three at minimum. And then you might have the opportunity to take one or possibly two courses outside of the Faculty of Arts and Science. Sometimes if students are at a graduate level at their home university, they may be able to request a, a course from the School of Graduate Studies. This doesn't happen all that often, so I would encourage you to reach out to our team if you think you do want to take one course from the School of Graduate Studies. Otherwise, we typically see exchange students requesting to take courses from engineering or the Smith School of Business, as well as the majority of their arts and science courses. And when I walk you through the instructions for course registration, you'll know exactly how you can request courses, if you'd like, it's not required, from either the Faculty of Engineering and Applied Sciences or the Smith School of Business. Within our faculty, we think that we will have enough to keep you busy. <laughs> we have a lot of departments in the Faculty of Arts and Science. These are just some of the subject areas that are uh, available to you as an arts and science student. So when you come in to study with us at Queen's, as I mentioned, you are based on the Faculty of Arts and Science, but you have access to all of these subject areas that I have listed here on the screen through arts and science departments. This means you could take a couple of economics courses, maybe a biology course, and perhaps a music course as well. So you're not limited to a subject area. 
what's most important is that you're looking for courses for which you meet the prerequisites, which we'll discuss in a couple of slides, but also courses that will help you in your home university degree progression. So our office can't advise you academically on your degree pro progression at your home university, but I recommend that you touch base with your home university tutor, professor, advisor, um, whomever that person is, just to clarify that you know what the parameters are, you know whether you can take a language course or if you should be taking only courses that are um, you know, particular to your degree. But this is exciting to look at because it does show you the wide array of course offerings we have, how interdisciplinary are, and hopefully is making you feel a little bit excited about the possible course opportunities. Now let's get into the nitty gritty a little bit and talk about the uh, academic considerations and parameters of your exchange with us. So what I want to do is break down a couple of the key details that you'll need to know uh, in order to be successful in your course registration. So let's start with the academic year that we have here at Queen's. Our academic year begins in September and ends in April, and it has two 12-week terms. So that might be more weeks than you're used to in a term or semester at your home university, or it could be a lot less. Our fall term is currently underway. It began September 7th and is finishing on December 22nd. And our winter term begins on January 10th, 2022 and ends on April 30th, 2022. Now we will be in touch in a little while with more information about orientation and arrival details, though we did send a welcome email that gave you some guidance on that front. When exchange students study with us, they will enroll in courses we recognize that around the world, there's different words used than course. For instance, in some places, the term paper is used or module is used. When we refer to a course, we're referring to the class that you'll go to, to have your lectures, to have your seminars. So students enroll in courses, which is the unit of study that allows students to earn credit. And those courses have two lengths that means. A course is either going to take place over the full academic year from September to April, and those courses are not available to you if you are only joining us for the winter term. Single term courses will either take place in the fall or in the winter. So a winter term course runs from January 10th, uh, possibly until April 30th with exams, and they are typically weighted at three units. What's important for you is to think about building your plan. So when you come with us to study with us, you will need to enroll in a certain number of units in a term. The unit is the, the measure on which we count um, credit that you will earn. So all students are needing to aim to earn at maximum 15 units per term. Exchange students may enroll in nine units up to 15 units per term. Now remember, you are only able to enroll in single term courses as you're joining us only for the winter term. And you must take between nine and 15 units. So those are the parameters that we set. What's most important is that you consult with your home university to determine the number of units that they need you to complete for your degree while you are at Queens. So we've let you know what our limits are between nine and 15 units per term. And your home university might have more specific guidance that you'll need to follow. So make sure that you connect with your home university and you understand what that important magic unit number is. Is it 9, 12, or 15? And that's really going to help you when you engage in course registration. So hopefully that helped lay a little bit of the foundations for what we're going to talk about next. I want to next move into some of the practical components of your course registration, so telling you how to navigate that process. But first, I do need to acknowledge the impact that COVID-19 has had on course registration. So I want to acknowledge that you are registering as a winter term student at a later date than a lot of the other students. So that could impact potentially what courses are available. Um, which is what we indicate at the bottom of the screen there, that there may be limited courses. 
Um, we will do all that we can to help you enroll in courses that are both of interest to you and are suitable for transfer credits for your home university. But as always, even before the pandemic, we do encourage you to be as flexible as possible uh, because there are many great courses here and there are lots of students who are interested in enrolling in them. What I encourage you to do is to reach out to us with any questions that you have along the way. You got to meet our team in an earlier slide and I can assure you we're really all about supporting students. Um, so we're happy to answer your questions at any point throughout this process. So now let's move into that practical part of the component or the webinar, sorry, that I was mentioning, which is talking fully about your course registration process. When enrolling in courses, there are three things that we ask exchange students to think about. So we're going to start our course registration uh, section of this webinar by looking at those three important considerations. I do want to note, and you might have picked this up already, that we have three colors that are <laughs> also um, making an appearance in our slides today. We have this lovely yellow, a nice deep blue, and a red color. Uh, these are colors that are very important to Queens. They are our colors. They are tri-colors. When you come to campus, you will see them on flags. You might see them on people's clothing. Um, it's very much a matter of school pride. And so I just wanted to acknowledge that too, because it's very apparent on this slide. <laughs> um, but back to course registration, let's talk a little bit about these three considerations. And let's begin by talking about course length. So as I had mentioned earlier on, courses have two different lengths here at Queens. They're either going to run for the full academic year or they're going to run for a single term. Let's take a look at a single term course. And what I've done here on the slide is I've taken a description from our academic calendar, which we're going to send you to after this webinar when you receive our follow-up email. The academic calendar has course descriptions, tells you what courses are offered in different departments, and it tells you a little bit about the course. As a winter term exchange student, you need to make sure you are only looking at courses that are offered in the winter term. And we'll talk about more ways to do that when we, when we talk about enrolling. But when you're looking at course descriptions, there's a clear way to denote this. And that is by looking at the number of units a course is weighted at. So by looking at this course, I see it is weighted at three units. That tells me this is only a single term course. And if I'm a winter term exchange student, I know that this is a course I can consider because it has the correct number of units. A second consideration we want you to keep front of mind is the level of which a course is offered. Here at Queen's, our undergraduate uh, degree programs in the Faculty of Arts and Science are four years in length. So you will see courses when you are looking for the ones you'd like to take that span from 100 in their course code all the way up to 400. And you might even see some courses that have a 500 number in their course code. This little graph here shows you what those numbers mean. So if you see a course that has the numbers 100 to 199, it means that the course is introductory in nature. That's a course that first year students who are fresh out of high school are going to be taking. Second year courses are uh, listed as 200 to 299 and students are entering that intermediate phase of their degree at this time. Third year courses are weighted from three or are numbered from 300 to 399 and fourth year from 400 to 499. Three, third year and fourth year courses do tend to be more intensive. They are courses that students enroll in when they have a more of that specialized knowledge of a particular subject area. Um, and they usually also have a lot more work or a little more work um, potentially than a first or a second year course. So consider this as you're looking at the courses and I'm sure it's quite similar with your home university. Um, and hopefully that helps you think about, you know, what, what level of courses is uh, most appropriate. Your home university might be able to help you determine what level of course is most appropriate for you, given where you are in your own degree program. So that's one tool that can help. And you can also reach out to our team and we can assist. But the good news is, is as I'll explain in a few slides, when you do engage in the course registration process, your transcript and the courses you request will be looked at by professors in our faculty. So even if you request a 300 level course that you're a little bit unsure of, 
a professor is going to take a look at your transcript and they're going to determine whether or not they think you're eligible for that course. Um, and then we'll be able to let you know. So there is kind of a fail safe or a safeguard there for you to help make sure you're not put in a course that you're not at the right level for. While we're on this slide, I also do want to note that fourth year courses can be very difficult to enroll in for an exchange student. The reason for that is because they're typically reserved for students who are graduating from the university. So oftentimes departments will keep those spaces really close and tight um, and they may not be as widely available. So do keep that in mind and remember to have that flexibility as you navigate with uh, through this process. So when we're looking at a course description, when we're thinking about what courses we want to enroll in, there are certain places in this description that are going to help you determine if a course is suitable for you or not, given its level. So we can look for a few things here. You'll note at the top the course code. The course code for this course is ARTH, which stands for Art History, 348. So I know when I look at that, that it's a 300 level course. Okay, so I think that's probably going to be a course that is a little more demanding that is for students who are specializing in that area who have taken a few art history courses um, and it, it might be a course that's not as easily available as a first year course it does look like a really great course though doesn't it arts in the arctic and i see from the units that it's a three unit course meaning it's probably only available for a term the other area i want to look at when i'm thinking about the level of the course is the requirements, which we've highlighted down in the bottom of that description. So courses that are listed and providing a description will include a section where they talk about the prerequisites that students must have in order to take the course. A prerequisite is a way that students are demonstrating that they have the foundational knowledge to be successful in a given course. Let's take Arts in the Arctic. In order to enroll in this course, the art history department needs to know that you are studying at a third year level or higher. That is the prerequisite that a student would need to be successful in the course. So when the professors and the faculty take a look at your request and they take a look at the um, your, your home university transcript, they will be able to determine if you meet the prerequisites. But already before you submit your course request to our office, you will be able to determine that yourself to a degree by taking a look at the descriptions and identifying those requirements. So we've covered the first two considerations. We really want you to think about the length of a course, its level, and the third is its availability. Now, when I talk about the actual instructions for course registration, I'm going to give you some really good tips on how to determine if a course is or is not available. But what I want to share now is that uh, because of COVID-19 to a degree, but also because some of our, our subject areas are widely subscribed to, we cannot guarantee that exchange students will be able to enroll in any given course. And so flexibility is needed. Unfortunately, some courses might not be offered, even if they were offered in the past. Um, but what we would encourage you to think about is if a course isn't available that used to be available, is there another course that I could take that would be of interest? Remember that our team works very closely with arts and science departments. We've got lots of great connections and there really are a wide array of interdisciplinary courses. So if something isn't available that you were hoping for, our goal would be to help you find something that's just as good and, and just as interesting. And we'll work with you to, to assist on that process. So I've been promising and hinting at course registration instructions, and now is the time I want to share with you the actual steps that you will take to enroll in courses. So the next few slides are going to give you screenshots and specific details. We will follow up with those in written format and this video recording, but let's go through them together generally to start and then we'll go through the next couple slides and break down the course registration process. In a nutshell, course registration includes the following steps. Firstly, you'll need to determine what Queen's courses you want to enroll in. You'll do that by connecting with your home university to understand what their requirements are for your exchange. Then you will need to research the courses that we are offering and that are available, and we will tell you exactly where to go to do that. Then you're gonna to need to make a list of the courses that you want to register in. 
and we encourage you to add additional courses, more courses than you actually could enroll in, so that you have a few backups just in case there are any um, competitive or uh, uh, widely subscribed to courses. After you do these steps to create your list, you will submit something called your course selection forms to the International Programs Office. These will be due on November 10th. After November 10th, our team will work on course registration on your behalf. So you actually won't be enrolling yourself in courses. You'll simply be sending those course selections to us. Then all you need to do is monitor your Queen's email for updates from our team until January, and then monitor your Solus account as well to see your, soul, your course schedule come together. So let's talk this through in a little more detail. Let's start with that first step, determining your courses. So here are some questions that we're going to encourage you to ask your home university. What do you need to transfer back to your home university from exchange? How many credits or units do you need to complete while you're at Queens? Because remember, that will determine the number of units you enroll in. Are there courses that are offered here that could build on or create new interests for you? That's a question for you to think about. And do you have room to take elective or option courses or does your home university need you to take courses that are specific to your degree subject area? Depending on the answers to this question, you will have some parameters or a bit of structure for the courses you select here at Queens. And if you do have room to take some elective or option courses, I would really encourage you to think about some of the courses that we've listed in this red box here. These are some of the courses that are very important to the International Programs Office team because they look at indigeneity and they look at equity, which are values that we hold quite dear. For instance, there's a course on uh, Introduction to Indigenous Arts of North America that could be of, of interest. There is a Black and Indigenous Poetries course, which is relatively new, that could be really great. And these are also ways for you to tap into some of those conversations I mentioned at the beginning of this session um, that are happening on campus and in Canada around truth and reconciliation and understanding the colonial history of this place. So we would encourage you to look into these. And if anything I'm saying is really ringing a bell for you, don't hesitate to reach out to our team. We're happy to give you a little more insight onto ways to get involved. After you determine those parameters I mentioned, you'll need to research your, the course offerings that are available to you. And there are three ways that you can do this. First, you can visit the academic calendar that I mentioned earlier. The academic calendar is an online tool that exists that lists all of the courses that have been offered in the last five years in the Faculty of Arts and Science. You can also visit department websites. This is a great way to get in-depth information about uh, courses that are specific to one of the arts and science departments. But the most definitive way that you will be able to research course offerings is through SOLIS. SOLIS is the online student administrative and financial center. It's where you will go to um, check to make sure your UHIP payment has gone through, update your local address for when your student card is sent out, but it is also where you will be enrolled in courses and where you will go to find your course schedule. This is a really important one, so let's spend a little bit of time talking about SOLAS. In order to access SOLAS, you need to take the following steps. You need to go to the Queen's University homepage, and then you need to find the red search and sign in button, which is located on the top right hand side of the screen. Once you click that, a little drop down box will appear that looks just like the photo in the bottom left corner of the screen. You'll need to click the My Queens U section of that drop down menu. That's going to take you to My so or to Solus. Following that, you will be brought to this page, which is your sign on page. You want to click the top button on the left hand side of your screen that says Solus. That will bring you into a place where you need to enter your net ID and your password. You have been sent this information in your acceptance package. Your net ID is a combination of letters and numbers. Usually your initials are involved. For instance, my net ID is HAM6. So I use this to log into Solus, but that also makes up the first part of my Queen's email address. 
So hopefully that tip helps you identify where your net ID is. And if you can't find it, you can always reach out to us and we'll be able to set you up or, and give you the instructions for how to find that. Of course, before you can access Solus, you will have needed to activate your net ID. And you see uh, a little bottom, uh, a little, uh, a few little hyperlinks in the bottom of that photo on the bottom uh, right side of the screen that says, you know, forgetting your net ID or your password. So you can always click that if you're, you're not sure if you set up your net ID and then ITS will help you set that up. So you'll use that information, your net ID and your password to log into Solus. When you log into Solus, you're going to see quite a lot of information. I encourage you to do this when you have a little bit of time to play around in Solus. You'll be able to see your own student center. You'll also be able to see the course search area of Solus. And that's the section that I want to focus on today. So you want to find a section that says search for classes. And you'll be brought to a page that looks like the picture on the left hand side of the screen. This is where you can search for arts and science courses. Now you'll note by our many red arrows on the screen that you'll need to enter some information, just like if you were searching for an academic article uh, in a journal or something like this. So you'll want to ensure that you have the correct term in your search criteria. We're using a photo from last year uh, because we didn't have that information when this presentation was built. Uh, so you'll see winter 2021. But of course, for you, you want to use the term winter 2022. Below that, you'll have a couple of search fields that you can complete. You'll have a huge list of different subject areas. What's very important is that you use a document I'll introduce in a few slides to make sure that the subject areas you are looking at are indeed offered in the Faculty of Arts and Science. You'll want to keep your course career at undergraduate and your campus at Maine. And you'll want to click the little button on the bottom part of the screen that says show open classes only. If you unclick that button, you will see courses that are not necessarily available. They might be full or they might be closed, um, meaning they're not open for registration, but those courses could become available at a later date. So it is okay if you do request some courses that are currently closed. When you search, you will be brought to a screen that looks like the picture on the right side of the page uh, that says search for classes and then search results. So this picture will show you a little bit about the information that Solus provides. And what we're looking at right now is the Solus timetable as well. So as I had mentioned, this is the most definitive place to find accurate course listings for your winter 2022 exchange. Let's go through that first course that's listed on, in that photo to get a better idea of what this information is telling us. So the first thing I do before I even go into looking at that general biochemistry course is double check that I am indeed looking at the right term. So again, we have winter 2021 in our example, but for you, that will be winter 2022. And then I wanna take a look at this course. So general biochemistry sounds really interesting to me, but I want to make sure that it's going to be available and it's going to be suitable given some of the considerations we provided earlier on. So I take a look and I realize that this course is a full year course. So if I was joining as a winter exchange student, this actually wouldn't be a course that would be suitable for me because it's already been running for half a year and exchange students cannot join courses in the middle of the, the course itself. So this is an, a great example. We wouldn't actually want you to enroll in one of these courses, but let's continue to use it so that we can see what the different sections of these descriptions are, because that's gonna be really useful to you as you enroll in courses. So when we look at a course description, we see that there's a section area and an instructor area. The instructor area is really fun because you'll get to actually see who your professor is. So if you want, you could do a little bit of research to see, okay, who is Professor Glenville? What is their um, area of expertise? Would I, would I be interested in learning from them? You can also take a look at that section area um, because it will tell you what the components of the class are. At Queen's, many of our undergraduate courses will have a lecture involved. So you might go to that lecture once or twice a week but many will also have a practical learning component. For arts courses, social science and humanities courses, those typically are seminars or tutorials 
which are gatherings where you will meet with either a teaching assistant or a professor and you'll engage in a in conversation about the topics you were learning about in lecture that week. If you're taking more of a science based course, likely the practical component will be a laboratory or uh, potentially a practicum where you're also gathering with your peers and potentially a professor or teaching assistant, but you're doing some work um, that can be assessed and graded that is related to what you're learning in lecture. So for this course, I see that they are offering a lecture that I would have to attend if I were an exchange student, but there's also labs. And I see that they actually have two lab sections. So I might indicate when I fill in my course selection form, which of those two labs is my preference. That's not a requirement, but you are very welcome to tell us that if you'd like. What else can we see here in this description? Well, we see the days and the times that a course is offered, as well as the meeting dates. These sections of the course description are really important because they will allow you to plan out a schedule. So I would encourage you when you're looking at these courses on the Solus timetable to maybe have a pad of paper or another document open in your computer where you can actually create what your schedule will look like. Sometimes students don't do that when they're actually selecting the courses. And this means when they arrive on campus, they have a very undesirable schedule that has them in early morning classes and late nights and on Fridays. And they work with our team to try and, and change that schedule because that timing is important to them. So if timing is important to you, I would encourage you to look at the days and times at this early stage of originally picking your courses. You'll also see something called the course status. So you have a little legend or key at the top of the page that we've highlighted here that has uh, three symbols, a green circle, which means the course is open. That means that that course is currently available for students to enroll in. A blue square, which means the department that offers the course. So in this instance, the Department of Biochemistry has closed the course. And a yellow triangle, which means that the course is full, but it does have a wait list. You, uh, or when we look at this, this description, we see that there are two green circles, meaning you are good to go, you can request that course. We also see a blue square, meaning that they have closed one of those labs. The typical reasons a lab might get closed include um, that perhaps they have limited capacity or, or perhaps there's reserved seating for students. You can, pardon me, you can request courses that are closed or have a wait list, but we can't guarantee that we will be able to enroll you in those courses. So if you are really keen, you want to see if you can enroll in a course in case anyone drops it, you want to be added to a wait list, you can still request but I would encourage you to have a backup plan just in case that drop uh, or that space doesn't become available. The final section that I want to show you of this course description is the class section. So this is really just uh, to let you know that there are particular numbers that you can list in the course selection forms, which we'll talk about shortly. Um, that tells us exactly what uh, course you want to enroll in. So if it's really important that you are in lab number three, you could include the class code uh, 2323 in the course selection forms, and then we'll be able to look for that course when we are enrolling you in it. As I mentioned, it will be very important as you're doing this course research to have some kind of a document. It could be a pad of paper, maybe your phone, maybe a Word document on your computer, where you are keeping a list of your top choices, your backup choices, and hopefully also a little bit of a schedule so that you can see if there are any course conflicts or uh, make sure that you have that desirable schedule that you want. So maybe avoiding classes on a particular day or avoiding classes at a particular time. Now, on the note of course conflict, I do want to uh, let you know that we cannot enroll you in courses if they are offered at the same time. That's not possible at Queen's because we do not record lectures and your participation in classes is very important. So if there are two courses that are offered at the same time and you're interested in both, sadly, you will have to make a choice between the two. But you could always put the, the course that gets second place on your list of backups, just in case you end up not liking the first course, or maybe the first course is full. So the, the main goal here is to keep that list running over the next little while, so you'll be able to easily refer to that. Now I've been hinting at these course selection forms along the way. These are documents that we will be sending to you next week. 
um, that are going to help you send those courses into our team. Because as I mentioned, your process is to send us the list of courses that you want to enroll in by November 10th. When we send you the course selection forms, you'll receive firstly a guide. And it's this picture here on the left side of the screen, your arts and science course selection guide. This will list all of the departments that are offered. Uh, so most of these are arts and science departments, but a few of them, such as the Smith School of Business, are actually those other faculties that I had mentioned earlier. So you can, as I mentioned, select one or two courses from the Smith School of Business and the Faculty of Engineering and Applied Sciences. Our course selection or our arts and science course selection guide is very helpful because it also tells you all of the course codes that are included in the departments you can request courses from. So I remember I told you earlier on that we would make sure to get that information to you. So keep this document handy when you are picking your courses. Once you have this document and you've taken a look at the Solus timetable, logging on through the website, you will then click on the links that we give you in this course selection guide. You'll note they're all in blue there to access the department online department course selection form. So for each of these departments, they each have their own course selection form that you'll need to complete. So let's say, for instance, I wanted to take a biochemistry course, an economics course, and an art history course. I would need to click on those three links and fill in those three forms, listing the particular courses in each of those forms. Your goal is to complete your uh, research, your, make your list, and then complete these forms by November 10th. And here are these important dates that we want you to keep in mind. So next week, beginning November 1st, we will send course registration instructions to you via email. If you do not get our email, please contact us. On November 10th, those forms are due to our office. So you'll follow the steps that we laid out earlier in the webinar to get to that course selection submission uh, part. And then in December, you can check Solus and you will probably see most of, of your courses on your, your course schedule. When you arrive on campus next year, um, and classes I think begin on January 10th, you will have the opportunity to add and drop courses. This is a really great feature of our exchange program, because it means if you don't enroll in all of your courses before you arrive, that's okay. And that's actually quite common. Most exchange students will finish enrolling in courses when they arrive on campus. You'll be able to come into our office, speak with our staff, and we'll be able to help you finalize your course enrollment. The last day that you can add and drop courses, oh, there's a little typo there, for winter 2022 is January 21st. So we're going to start this process next week and you will technically have until January 21st to add or drop courses. So just to reiterate one more time, we're going to try and complete your course enrollment as much as possible before you arrive. But if you don't have all courses before you arrive on campus in snowy January, we don't want you to be alarmed by that because that is quite common for exchange students. So what happens next? We want you to mark those very important course registration dates in your diary, your scheduler, your agenda, wherever you like to keep dates. We want you to revisit the pre-departure checklist from earlier in this session. Monitor your Queen's email account. As we mentioned in the emails we've sent you recently, we are only going to be emailing you at your Queen's email account. So it's very important that that is set up and you're feeling comfortable with it. We want you to watch some of the International Center webinars. So we'll make sure to email those to you. And then watch out for our upcoming webinars. So we likely will be providing orientation webinars for you as you approach your exchange and more information will reach you soon on that front. And of course, contact our team for any advising if you have concerns. And please give us a follow if you're on socials. We're at Queen's U IPO on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. But at this stage, I'd love for Nikki to come on back. Maybe we can pause the recording and we would love to answer your questions. <laughs>